Talking about Hurricane Matthew today, is it prophetic or not? By now, you probably know a lot more than I do. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. Rocks of revelation being poured out. My passion is for people just like you to develop a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. Today, we're going to be talking about either a bunch of hype or maybe it's something prophetic. By the time you hear this podcast, you're going to be in a much better position to judge because... I'm in your past. I'm recording this podcast on a beautiful, sunny day in South Coast Mississippi on October 6th, the year of our Lord, 2016. I'm looking out my window right now, and it's a beautiful day. It's got a nice blue sky. I really can't wait to get this podcast over with so I can go outside and enjoy it. Just kidding. I love doing the podcast. And at the time I'm doing this podcast, there's this ominous Hurricane Matthew heading towards the East Coast. Now, many people are on the internet. They're jumping on the bandwagon that this is somehow a prophetic symbol of God's warning to the church in America. Now, like I said, when you hear this podcast, you're going to be in a much better position to judge because I'm recording this on October 6th. Susan showed me how Hurricane Matthew looked like a skull. If you remember, there were pictures all over the Internet. This weatherman was talking about uh, how Hurricane Matthew was going to hit Haiti. And people kept noticing that you could see a skull. It had an eyeball. It had teeth. And it was really kind of scary looking. And this picture became viral very quickly over the Internet. And this fueled this possible prophetic thing of Matthew. You know, Hurricane Matthew, it's named Matthew, right? As you know, Matthew is one of the four Gospels included in the Bible. And people are taking particular note that this Hurricane Matthew is supposed to hit landfall on October 7th, which, for me... Is tomorrow. They're focusing very highly on Matthew chapter 10, verse 7, because that would be October 7th. So it's kind of like they're saying the Lord is saying Matthew chapter 10, verse 7. He's thundering from the heavens. And that verse is, as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So By the time you hear this, you'll probably know whether this is a prophetic utterance or people are just trying to get more traffic to their websites. I find it quite interesting that this storm is coming on October 7th and that people are highlighting this scripture, which seems to be largely ignored. But if you read the entire passage, I'm going to read it in context for you in a minute. You can see that people all over the world are finally taken to the streets and actually doing this passage. You know how Jesus says to make disciples, teaching them to observe whatsoever I've told you in Matthew 28. There's a movie, and I'm going to include the link to it. If you haven't seen it already, it's called The Last Reformation. And you're going to see that people all over the world are taking to the public marketplace, and they're praying for people right now. And people are getting healed all over the world right now. They're getting baptized by the hundreds sometimes. And it's almost like the book of Acts is happening now, but this time we have cameras. I watch people all over on my Facebook posts. They, they're, they're posting videos about how they're ministering out in the marketplaces. They get excited 
about what God is doing, and they're actually interviewing people that have just been healed through prayer. So before I go any further, let me read Matthew 10, 5 through 10, which will be, you know, like October 5th through the 10th. This is the, seems to be the span of this hurricane, right? So that you can see what Jesus is talking about. Matthew 10, 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any of the city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor scrip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. So Jesus at this time was telling the disciples to go to the covenant people, you know, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's kind of what Susan and I do when we go out praying for people. We're praying for people. A lot of them are just, <laughs> they're not on their, they're not activating in the destiny that the Lord has them. And we're praying to get them activated to act like the book of Acts. Now, preaching denotes something done in the public marketplace. It's not something, a lot of people think it's supposed to be done in a, in a building. But it's something that we do in the public marketplace, heralding a message. It means to herald a message of the gospel the kingdom of heaven is near in the public marketplace. They've heard it 50,000 times in the building, right? <laughs> we need to take it out to the people. Also, Jesus commanded them to raise the dead, cast out devils, heal the sick. And it's interesting that that is what is happening all over the world right now. This is a current wave of God. Now, you know that I follow several people on Facebook, and, and one of them that I'm thinking of right now is Kevin Reardon. I asked Kevin how many people he prayed for before he started seeing this onslaught of healings. It's like God's healing everybody he prays for, it seems like. He prayed for thousands. He was faithful to pray for thousands of people, and then all of a sudden, it's like the faucet turned on, and the Lord is healing people. But it's not just through Kevin. We've got friends like Gary Nesbitt. I mean, people all over the world, just, just look, just go to Facebook. People are getting healed. It's on YouTube, too. This is a current move of God that God is doing right now, and it seems to be happening out in the marketplace. Now, also, another part of this passage in Matthew 10, 5 through 10, which strikes me as interesting, is freely you've received and freely give. Now, when we go out and minister on the streets and the parks and the beaches and all that, one of the things that seems to irritate the people is how the church has turned into a business. And before I did this podcast, I was dreaming about how the church has turned into a business. Got to keep a building open, pay some salaries. But this model that Jesus has laid before us doesn't provide for that. It doesn't say go build buildings and put people on salary. He says, freely you've received, freely give. And then also, this matter that Jesus sends the people out without money, he said, don't take any gold. Don't take any silver. Don't even take brass. He tells them not to take extra coats or shoes. Man, I'm telling you right here, that Habakkuk passage, which is quoted later in the New Testament, the just shall live by faith, starts taking on a meaning with these guys. They went to the city, and they worked the field, and people were so moved that they would take care of them. In other words, they were supposed to do the ministry first, and then the people there in those cities would take care of him. That reminds me of the passage where Jesus says, they, they were saying, oh, he doesn't have any bread. He says, M -m -m Jesus says something awesome here. They said, wow, he doesn't have any bread, you know, and master, eat. And he said to you, he said to them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. And the disciples in 433, they said, hath any man brought him anything to eat? And Jesus says in Matthew 434, now listen to this. 
My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. And then he goes on to talk about this. Say not that there's four months and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receives wages and gathers fruit unto life eternal, that both he and he that soweth and reapeth may rejoice together. Amen. And then he talks about work in the field. Herein is that true saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. Amen. And he goes on a little further. I sent you to reap that wherein you bestowed no labor. Other men labored and you were entered into their labors. So Jesus is, you know, reiterating a spiritual precept that if we just go out and work the field, our needs are met, man, like the sparrows, like, you know, take no thought for the morrow what you shall eat, drink or wear and all that stuff. God's going to take care of us. Just work the field. And that's happening right now. Now, I have no idea whether this hurricane is a prophetic symbol. And I do know that it's highlighting people paying attention to Matthew ten five through 10. It emphasizes going into the cities and preaching the gospel in the public marketplace. We need to change the mindset right now, drop our divisions, drop our denominational differences, and go out and invade the world. Everybody thinks that pushing a button is going to solve the problem that America has. That's not going to happen. We need to get off the couch and go out in the marketplace, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, and preach the word of God that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I don't know if this hurricane is prophetic at all, but it is highlighting this scripture. It emphasizes that we're not supposed to worry about money. God is going to take care of us. If we work the field, do you have faith, brothers and sisters? Do you have faith? So by the time you actually hear this podcast, you're going to know a lot more about Hurricane Matthew. You're going to know a lot more. I'm talking about it on October 6th. One thing I know is our Facebook friends in Haiti had no problems at all. Many people were praying for them and they reported well. Praise God. Another thing that strikes my mind right now, Lance Rowe had made a post. He's a friend of mine on Facebook. And he was pointing out how how people will take any opportunity they can to make money, even off the biblical precept, even off biblical prophecy. I mean, just kind of back up for a second, step away from the storm and go, you know, there's been a lot of books that have been sold, and a lot of movies that have been made about this pre-tribulation escapism flyaway rapture. Many people are wanting to fly away and escape all the problems as they, live, as they live sinfully in the world, right? And they pay money to people to tell them that. You know, they heap themselves up teachers telling them what they want to hear. But if we read the Bible for ourselves, we end up posting Facebook posts, kind of like Lance Rowe did. <laughs> There's been a lot of books sold on the blood moons and the Shemitah. And did these disastrous events happen that they predicted? So just because a lot of people are selling books and using scriptures and making YouTube videos and jumping up and down like Chicken Little, it doesn't necessarily mean that God is saying that. Amen? And if you step back and you kind of look at the track record, you can go, you know what? They've been doing this for quite some time. How about the Y2K? Remember the Y2K thing? The whole bunch of Christians were jumping up and down saying we are we need to run to the hills and they're selling the disastrous uh, relief food and all that stuff. And now, since nothing happened, all the prophecies are yanked down from the websites. And you may, you may be able to find some Y2K books for free or maybe on 99 cents on the Internet. But basically, that was a dud, right? A lot of people made some money out of that. And along with the blood moons and the Shemitah, you'll see that people are kind of like, they have those commercials for the disastrous relief, you know, to get them through the seven years of the tribulation that the Antichrist is supposed to come. And I'm not saying that none of this is false. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, look, they're trying to profit off of fear, right? Um, So the same people saying, well, we're going to escape out of this, 
But here's this disastrous relief, just in case we're wrong. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, I mean, think about it. It's kind of like a double-loaded message. Is that faith at all? You know, guys, I'm into the prophetic. I love prophetic words from the Lord. I'm not discounting the prophetic gift at all. I still believe God speaks to his people. And I'm going to tell you, the the message that the Lord spoke, we're coming up on the 20-year anniversary. God split the pulpit in two in October of 1996 at Christian Tabernacle with a very clear prophetic message from the Lord about Second Chronicles 7.14, and nobody's paying attention to it. People have forgotten about what God's actually saying. Amen? And they're paying attention to the shiny stuff. The pre-tribulation rapture escapism mentality, I'm not even going to be here. Praise God. And one of the things that frustrates me about this pre-tribulation rapture escapism, you know, flyaway mentality, is that people, when things get worse, they don't go out and start trying to win souls and save people from, from hell. What they do is they sit back on the couch even tighter and say, praise God, Jesus is coming back. He said it would be bad. So that is my frustration. Like I said, by the time you hear this podcast, Hurricane Matthew will probably have already come and gone. Um, I don't know. I'm praying that it doesn't do any damage. I mean, Haiti, we prayed for the people in Haiti. They got through it, you know hunker down in prayer. Hurricane Katrina decimated where we live. People are still talking about it right now. And uh, you can still see how it's affected this community. And uh, hurricanes are bad. I pray that you made it through okay. I pray in any event, hurricane or not, that you have a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. If this podcast has touched you, please consider sharing this with your friends and family on social media. Also, please like, rate, and comment wherever you hear this podcast because that helps raise it in the rankings and people can become exposed to the message of having a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for being in my life. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at comradrocks.net.